Visualize the common image of cover, a wall of sandbags that looks strong, reliable, maybe even impenetrable. You've seen it a thousand times in movies, where the hero dives behind a sandbag wall, bullets thud harmlessly into the sand, and he lives to fight another day, so it's become a universal symbol for safety in a firefight. But it's a dangerous lie. Well-meaning people, from Hollywood directors to home preppers, believe that just stacking up some bags of sand will stop a bullet, and they're about half right. The problem is, there's a fatal flaw in almost every construction. A mistake born from a total misunderstanding of simple geometry. And that mistake can turn your fortress into a death trap. So in this analysis, we will deconstruct that flaw prove why it fails, and give you the one simple principle that separates real cover from a fatal illusion. First, let's be fair to the humble sandbag and ask why we trust it in the first place. The principle is actually simple and incredibly sound, because when a bullet hits something solid like a steel plate, it tries to punch or shatter its way through with violent focused energy. But sand is different, as it's a granular medium, meaning it doesn't fight back with rigidity, but instead yields, absorbs, and swallows the bullet whole. Think about it this way. To get through a wall of sand, a bullet can't just punch one neat hole. It has to physically push millions of tiny grains of sand out of its way, and every grain it touches steals its energy through friction and impact. The sand literally flows around the bullet, enveloping it and bringing it to a stop with millions of tiny collisions. And this method of spreading out the force is brutally effective. Let's examine the physics with a properly constructed sandbag wall. In this model, the bags are laid in a staggered, overlapping pattern, just like bricks, in what is called a running bond. And the bags are filled about two-thirds full, so they lay flat and create a dense, solid barrier with no obvious gaps. Now, let's introduce a standard 9mm pistol round into the scenario, a capable round by any measure, but against a wall built like this, the outcome is quite predictable. An analysis of the cross-section is revealing, because as the diagram shows, the bullet enters the first bag, but its energy is fully absorbed before it can exit, and the projectile is contained. A single properly laid sandbag easily stopped that 9mm, just as the physics dictates. So sand is fantastic at stopping bullets, which raises the question, if the sand itself works, where's the fatal flaw? The flaw isn't the material, it's the architecture, it's the geometry. And the mistake everyone makes is how they stack the bags whether it's because of speed, ignorance, or just plain laziness. Many constructions use what's called a stack bond, which simply means placing the bags directly on top of one another so all the seams line up vertically. It looks clean, it's fast, and it feels sturdy, but what it really creates are channels of weakness. Perfect, continuous highways for a bullet to travel right through the wall. Observe this diagram where the four corners of these stacked bags meet to form a small diamond-shaped gap. It doesn't look like much, but a projectile doesn't need much, and at this intersection, the bullet encounters significantly less sand than it would striking the center of a bag, which makes it a path of least resistance. Instead of having to chew through 12 plus inches of dense, compacted sand, a bullet hitting this seam only has to defeat the thin fabric of the bags and a few inches of much looser material. And this is the fatal flaw. You can have a wall made of the best ballistic material in the world, but if you assemble it into a grid of weak points, you haven't built a barrier. You've built a sieve, and you've basically given your opponent a set of invisible bullseyes to aim for. An incoming round doesn't see a solid wall. It sees a bunch of dense pillows connected by soft, vulnerable seams. And that is a critical, and potentially lethal, misunderstanding of defensive geometry. Now let's put this concept to the test by modeling a second wall, this time constructed using the flawed stack bond method so that all the seams are aligned, creating those channels of weakness we discussed. The test begins again with the 9mm, which last time didn't even exit the first bag, but this time the trajectory is aimed directly at the intersection of four bags. Let's analyze the x-ray view. The entry is precisely in the seam, and examining the rear of the first layer, penetration is confirmed, because the bullet passed completely through the first row of bags and is lodged somewhere in the second. It didn't exit the entire wall, but it completely defeated the first layer, something a center hit couldn't do. So a simple handgun round has just proved the theory, and now we escalate. Next, consider the 5.56 round, a projectile that is smaller and lighter than the 9mm, but moving roughly three times faster. And since kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared, that speed makes all the difference. This little round is designed for one thing, penetration. And against this flawed model, the results will be dramatic, with the impact point once again at the weak seam. The entry point, as illustrated, is again the weak spot. 
and now an analysis of the exit shows a clean pass-through, with the round punching right through that seam and exiting the other side of the wall, meaning that geometric flaw has rendered the sandbag wall into little more than a visual screen, which is a catastrophic failure. But the analysis isn't complete yet, so we escalate the scenario with a dot .308 Winchester round, a full-power rifle cartridge, where the 5.56 is a scalpel, the dot .308 is a sledgehammer, built to carry massive energy over long distances. And if the flaw was critical with the 5.56, it is going to be absolutely devastating here, with the trajectory once again aligned with the seam. Observe the kinetic energy transfer as the impact alone shifts the bags. The entry is depicted as a ragged tear right where the four corners met, and the exit is a catastrophic blowout, because the bullet didn't just pass through, it violently tore its way down the path of least resistance, ripping the bags open and destroying the integrity of the wall. What was supposed to be cover has just been effortlessly dismantled, and this is why geometry isn't just for math class. It's a matter of survival. So what is the solution? Thankfully, it is as simple as the flaw is deadly, because the wall must be built so those continuous seams don't exist. And this is accomplished by using a running bond and staggering the joints, the same way masons have been building strong walls for thousands of years. As the diagram shows, every bag on a new layer must sit squarely on top of the seam of the two bags below it. And this simple change is revolutionary. Now, a bullet hitting anywhere on the wall, even on a seam, cannot travel in a straight line through a weak point because it is immediately forced to dig diagonally through the dense, compacted body of the bag above or below it. This forces the bullet to fight for every single inch and eliminates the path of least resistance. The seams of the bags should always face inward, away from the threat, with the folded over end tucked underneath. And this isn't just stacking bags, it's interlocking them into a single solid structure where every bag reinforces the others. And this is the simple principle that turns a pile of sand into life-saving cover. Let's run a final simulation to prove the solution with the model now a properly constructed wall using the running bond method where every seam is staggered and overlapped and the bags are packed in tight. Now we apply the ultimate test. Dot 308 rifle round is introduced into the simulation the same round that blew right through the flawed wall. And if the geometry is sound, the outcome should be completely different, so the trajectory will again target a seam directly, giving it the best possible chance to penetrate. Let's analyze the outcome. The illustration shows the impact point directly on the vertical seam between two bags. But because of the running bond, that seam is sitting right on top of the solid center of the bag below it, and a cutaway view reveals what happened. The bullet tears through the fabric of the top bags, but as the diagram shows, it is stopped dead inside the body of the lower bag and never even gets close to the back. By simply staggering the bags, the bullet was forced off its straight line path and into the thickest part of the wall, where it had to go head to head with the full depth of the sand, and in that fight, the sand won, the geometry held, and the cover worked. So the big takeaway here is that common knowledge can be dangerously incomplete. Yes, sandbags can absolutely save your life, but only if you use them correctly because the sand itself isn't magic and its power is either unlocked or totally wasted by the geometry of how you stack it. Building a lazy stack bond wall gives bullets a roadmap to failure. It fails against handguns and gets utterly defeated by common rifle rounds, while the fix is simple. Stagger the bags in a running bond like a bricklayer, because that one change forces any incoming round to fight through the maximum amount of sand, turning a weak screen into a true barrier. Remember, just because you can't see through it doesn't mean it will stop a bullet and understanding that difference. And the simple geometry that creates real cover is what separates a deadly trap from genuine defense.